Hi! Hello everyone, this is George. Welcome to tech to tinker In this video, we will talk about the Bluetooth module with ESP32 using MicroPython. Though ESP32 has a built-in Bluetooth capability, sometimes we want flexibility of using external module. This lesson should be also beneficial for microcontrollers that has no built-in wireless capability, such as the Raspberry Pi Pico. This Bluetooth module is powered by HC06, which works on Bluetooth version 2.0 communication protocol, also known as Bluetooth Classic. We will use UART Serial as communication protocol between ESP32 and the Bluetooth module. Then the Bluetooth module will then communicate via Bluetooth communication with other Bluetooth device. So basically, this module will act as a middleman or a bridge between a microcontroller and other Bluetooth capable devices. What I have here is a Bluetooth module included in Gorilla Cell ESP32 development kit. It has four pins, namely GND for the ground pin, VCC for the supply voltage, PX for the UART transmit pin, RX for the UART receive pin. In order to follow this lesson, you will need an ESP32 development board, a Gorilla Cell ESP32 shield, a four pin female to female two point jumper wires and of course the bluetooth module itself in using the gorilla cell development kits the following should be observed when attaching the two point wires to the modules the color coding should be observed that is black for the ground red for the vcc yellow and the following colors to the signal pin while the other end of the DuPont wires should be connected to the ESP32 shield by matching the colors of the jumper wires to the colors of the pin headers. That is, black is to black, red is to red, yellow, and the following colors to the yellow pin headers. For this lesson, I choose GPIO23 for the TX pin and GPIO25 for the RX pin. Now for the software part, I prepared here the example source code for this demonstration. For example 1, let's begin with the basics. Basically, it starts with importing the UART class from the machine module. Then we created a UART object named BT for Bluetooth, which is using port 2 with a baud rate of 9600 with a TX pin set to GPIO25 and RX pin set to GPIO23. Let me click the run button to execute example number one. You may notice that the LED here is blinking. It means that the HC06 is not yet connected to any Bluetooth device. So I have here a mobile phone. I will connect via Bluetooth. So I will turn on my Bluetooth your new device so it will scan Bluetooth devices around and it found the HC06 I will select HC-06 common pin is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and ok it will pair and it will be under the currently connected devices now we will need a serial Bluetooth application which I already downloaded. This is serial Bluetooth terminal which you can download on your Google Play by going to your Google Play. By the way, I am using a different store, Google Store. So you will just search Bluetooth. Serial, serial Bluetooth, I think. 
stream. Yeah, this this one, the first one, Serial Bluetooth Terminal by Kai Morich. So you just need to download this one, which I already have, so I will just open this one. Go to menu, select devices, and select HC06. So it will connect to HC06. Now the LED in the Bluetooth module is lights on. It's not blinking because we are now connected to HC06. So there is a device connected to the HC06 Bluetooth module. Now let's send a command. Let's say hider. Hider. Okay. We'll send. So it should be received by our Bluetooth module, which is now transferred to the ESP32. So we can check if there is available data in the serial using bt.ini, which will return a number of bytes available in the received port of the serial. So there is 11 bytes of data. So we can read it by sending bt.read which will read all the 11 bytes like this and as you can see it returns it receives hider backslash r backslash n which is equivalent to enter and if we check again if there is available serial data in the receive terminal there is no if we send again, let's say, hello, and we check if there is available data, bt.ini, you can see that there is 7. So, we, re we read, read all the data available using bt.read. Or you can input the number of bytes as parameter you want to read from UART. So that is bt that read. Let's just read one byte. Which will return each. And if we read bt that read all, it will return from e hello. It's like this. So notice the difference between bt read with parameter of number of bytes you want to read. You may also read one line that it will search for backslash r backslash n and it will return one liner. So let's say we send hello and another i. So if we read bt bt that read line it will send hello only and if we read again bt that read line we can receive the i now if we want to write or transmit uh, from esp32 by a bluetooth module to our bluetooth device in our case, this mobile phone, we can bt.write and the message you want to send. Let's say hello from Tech to Tinker. And hit enter. And as you can see, it is also displayed in the Bluetooth serial terminal in mobile phone. Now, let me click the stop button to terminate example number one. And let's see the example number two. In example number two, we can control the onboard LED, which is connected on GPIO2, which we name as LED, with the pin direction set as an output. So, basically, we are checking if the Serial Bluetooth has any data. So if there is a data not equal, 
not equal to 0, it means there is a data. So, we save it. We read all with the number of bytes. Then, we decode it. We basically convert from binary to string. Then, we strip. We remove the backslash R, backslash N. And, we print through the serial, through the REPL, the serial received data. Then, we check if the message received is on, we turn on the LED. If the message received is off, we turn off the LED. Simple, right? So, let me click the run button to execute example number 2. Now, here in the terminal, I already configure the button. So, let me long press then as you can see the name is on and the value that will be sent is text on which is a text similar to the off so the name is off with a value of off so let me press the on it should turn on the onboard LED as you can see and it prints the message here in the repo if we send off it will turn off the onboard LED and on again and off else if other message let's say this high nothing will happen only we print it in the repo or let's say this blink command which will do nothing because there is no code for the blink. So, let me click the stop button to terminate example number 2. And let's see the example number 3. Which is basically still similar to example number 1 and number 2. But this time, it's a little bit longer. Because we added the function to handle the blink command. And we also read the onboard boot button as an input so basically this is to control an output and this will send the status of the switch I changed it a little bit and now we read the serial receive data and we just decode it and we don't strip the backslash r backslash n because we are just searching if there is a text string equals to on or off or link else we just print what is the message and we strip the backslash r backslash n notice that if the message is on we turn on the led and we deinitialize the timer zero because the timer zero will be used or blinking the onboard LED. We also print that the LED is on. If the message is off or it contains an off, it will turn off the onboard LED, we initialize the timer zero, and we print LED is off. If the message is blink, we initialize the timer zero, which will trigger every 250 milliseconds which is periodic it means it will toggle every 250 milliseconds then it will call this lambda function which is basically a virtual function in python which basically contain is toggling the led value then we print led is blinking Else, if the message is not on or off or not blink, then we just print the message. Here, I created an interval of 300 milliseconds by using the ticks underscore ms function from the time module. Which, if ticks ms, the current time minus the start time is greater than 300 milliseconds. If it's more than 300 milliseconds or equal to 300 milliseconds, we check the state of the switch. 
which is connected on GPIO 0 with the pin direction as an input. So, this boot switch is active low will check if the value is logic low. If it is pressed, it will send a message stating boot button is pressed. And it will also print a message in the REPL. And we will capture the start time again. So let me click the run button to execute example number three. We can send on, which will send LEDs on or off, which will send LEDs off or blink, which will result blinking the onboard LED. If we send other message, let's say this high, Nothing happens. But now we can turn off the onboard LED or on or blink. Or if we press the boot button, it should send a message. And boot button is pressed. Receive in the Bluetooth serial terminal. Once more. Okay. If we send other message, let's say either, nothing will happen. We just print what is the message. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. As always, the source code that is in here including other information can be found in the companion blog post for this video tech2tinker.blogspot.com Links in the video description If you have any concern regarding this lesson, please write your message in the comment section. Please give this video a thumbs up and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. Please don't forget to subscribe because I will be uploading more contents like this in the future. Thank you and have a good days ahead. See you and God bless.